Welcome back guys, so we all know that frame generation improves a game's performance by adding interpolated frames, also called fake frames. This results in a smoother looking animation, however, it increases the system latency as well. If you have used frame generation yourself, you must have observed an increase in input delay after enabling it. There are certain measures to counter this increase in latency. Nvidia uses Reflex, AMD uses Anti-Lag version 1 and 2. Now Anti-Lag version 1 can be enabled from adrenaline software, it's a driver level implementation. But this is not the case for Anti-Lag version 2. At the moment, only a few games support Anti-Lag 2. I have tested it in Ghost of Tsushima and Counter-Strike 2. Need to enable Anti-Lag 2 from the game setting. Make sure your ally is running on the latest AMD GPU driver, Adrenaline version 24.9.1. It includes a built-in latency monitor. You can enable it by pressing the hotkey Alt-Shift-NL. Using this latency monitor, we can see the real-time value of latency. Anti-Lag 2 can be disabled on the fly by pressing and holding the right control key. In this video, I'll be comparing the latencies of FSR 3.1 and AFMF2 frame generation techniques. The latter is AMD's travel level implementation of frame generation. Unlike FSR, it does not rely on any game data like motion vectors. In this video, I'll be showing you how to enable Anti-Lag 2 in games that support NVIDIA Reflex using a free mod called DLSS Enabler. Games that support DLSS frame generation will always support NVIDIA Reflex. DLSS Enabler is the same mod that allows us to use FSR 3.1 frame generation by replacing DLSS frame generation with it. It also allows us to replace DLSS upscaler with XCSS or FSR upscaler. I'll be using this version of DLSS Enabler 3.02.000.0. You can download it for free from GitHub. Arter is the author of DLSS Enabler. Update log. Changes since version 3.01 Reduce system latency on AMD RDNA 1 Plus GPUs with and without frame generation enabled by using Anti-Lag 2 provided by Fake NV API. This is implemented by Fake Mikau. Big thanks to them. So this means we can use Anti-Lag 2 even without frame generation. ROG LS GPU is Radeon 780M RDNA 3 base. System latency is reduced on Intel Arc GPUs and AMD pre-RDNA 1 GPUs with and without frame generation using latency flex provided by fake NV API. This is the replacement for Anti-Lag 2 on these GPUs. Enabling Anti-Lag 2 is very simple. You just need to open nvngx.infl and set reflex emulation to either auto or off. Setting it to on will disable Anti-Lag 2. I'll quickly show you the setup process for Cyberpunk 2077. Download this build. Click on the exe file. I've already downloaded it. Need to install the mod in the games directory where the game's exe file is present. This is the install directory, open bin folder, open x64 folder. This is the final directory, there is the game's exe file. Copy the directory. Execute DLSS enabler setup file, there it is. I accept next, next, paste, next. Install as a version.tll file. This step varies from game to game. Enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Next, install. Mod has been installed. Just open the games directory where you installed it. Here, look for nvngx.inf file. There it is. Open it. Reflex set to on. Reflex emulation set to auto. In generator, I'll just set it to FSR 31. On PCs with non RTX GPUs, the LSS enabler uses. XCSS version 1.3 upscaler by default for DirectX 12 games. Cyberpunk 2077 officially supports FSR 3. It's a very bad implementation. You are forced to use FSR upscaler that produces shimmering of textures. Using this mod is highly recommended. I have set the UMA buffer size to 6 GB, 720p resolution, CPU boost disabled. Using a 25 watts manual profile, all three power values set at 25 watts. My ally is running on BIOS version 441. I am using Gullicate KK3 Max gamepad. We will be using a custom afterburner overlay to show you the performance metrics. Internal in settings for the game, free sync enable, v sync enable. That's it. In game settings, I am using the medium preset with motion blur disabled, upscaling set to DLSS which is basically XCSS. Using its quality preset, frame generation disabled for the time being. Just scroll down medium to high settings video settings I have enabled NVIDIA reflex low latency now anti-lag 2 should be working I'll just enable anti-lag 2's 
latency monitor need to press its hotkey alt shift and l keep pressing the hotkey to cycle through the legends you can see the legend in the top left corner i'll stick with this one if you disable reflex latency won't be displayed 720p resolution we think of we are in this is little china standing right outside we's apartment building fps is close to 55 and you can see the latency around 53 milliseconds anti lag 2 can be disabled on the fly by holding the right control key i just disabled it latency increased to around 63 milliseconds latency increased by around 10 milliseconds after disabling anti lag 2 And this is the input response without frame generation higher the fps lower the latency it's as simple as that 50 to 56 milliseconds latency now i'll enable fsr 3.1 frame generation frame generation set to dlss same location now we are getting around 90 fps can observe that it amount of smoothness frame generation is working hard elements are not flickering even the crosshair is not flickering okay we are getting a latency of around 74 milliseconds i'll just disable anti lag 2 hold right control key no change in latency i think this is due to the fact that we are not hitting the gpu bottleneck anti lag 2 helps in reducing the latency in gpu bottleneck scenarios so without anti lag 2 and fsr frame generation we were getting a latency of around 63 milliseconds without anti lag 2 and fsr 3.1 enable latency is around 74 milliseconds roughly a 10 milliseconds increase in latency now i'll be enabling fsr 2 first disable fsr 3.1 frame generation of reflex enable disable after one overlay open internal and disable vsync enable efmf2 check its status should be active search mode set to high this prevents frame generation from getting disabled performance mode set to quality enable internal and overlay back to the game it's the same spot and we are getting roughly the same performance 95 96 fps frame generation lag value 15 milliseconds yeah i can observe the added amount of smoothness Okay, the crosshair is flickering. Difficult to observe this graphical artifact on a small display. Games hard elements are not flickering. Latency value around 60 milliseconds with FSR 3.1 frame generation. We were getting around 70 to 74 milliseconds. I'll just disable anti lag 2. Yeah, latency increased to around 72 milliseconds. we were getting the same value with fsr 3.1 frame generation enable and anti lag 2 disable so anti lag 2 is working with efmf2 not sure why it did not work with fsr 3.1 we'll see in other games graphical artifact but i'll be honest guys really impressed by efmf 2's performance The Witcher Three Wild Hunt. I have already installed the mod and shown the setup process. Internal and settings, freezing and vsync enable. I have to disable for the time being. I am running the game at full HD resolution for the mod to work properly. In-game graphics setting using the low preset. Upscale is set to DLSS, which is basically XSS using its balanced preset. All effects enable. Motion blur disable. Display settings. Full HD resolution, reflex enabled, DLSS frame generation disabled, enable latency monitor. And there it is in the top left corner. There's Carrot. I'm standing at the entrance of Novigrad. Here FPS is close to 36. Latency is around 65 milliseconds. I'll just disable anti lag 2. Oh my God! Latency increased to around 140 milliseconds. I have observed some latency in this game. See, anti lag two really works very nicely. Enabled. Now I'll enable frame generation. On. Resume the game. We are getting 60 FPS. 
can observe the added amount of smoothness, no graphical artifacts, HUD elements are not flickering, latency of around 75 milliseconds, disable anti-lag 2 and latency increased to around 160 milliseconds. Without FSR 3.1 frame generation and anti-lag 2, latency was around 140 milliseconds. With FSR 3.1 frame generation enabled and no anti-lag 2, latency was around 160 to 164 milliseconds, roughly a 24 millisecond increase in latency. Disable DLSS frame generation, I'll just enable AFMF2, reflex enabled. From adrenaline, just disable VSync, set AFMF2 on, check its status, should be active, search mode set to high, performance mode set to quality. Back to the game, can observe the smoothing effect but I'm also observing some ghosting around Geralt, even around his swords. So if I have to is producing some noticeable graphical artifacts, hard elements are not flickering. Latency is around 70 milliseconds, disable anti-lag 2 and latency increased to around 160 milliseconds. Roughly the same latency using AFM2 and FSR 3.1 frame generation. But FSR 3.1 frame generation produced less graphical artifacts. Now I'll be testing the next game. I'll be running the PC Game Pass version of Starfield. This game supports FSR 3.0 officially. Game does not support FSR 3.1, so we cannot use XCSS in conjunction with FSR frame generation. But the mod allows us to do this. Using the quality preset of XCSS, render resolution scale set to 67%, everything set to low, motion blur disabled, set up scale to DLSS, which is basically XCSS. Frame generation disabled for the time being reflex low latency enabled. Film grain disabled. I'll enable latency monitor. Game is running at 720p resolution. I'll just loot planet Jamison area. Very demanding. We are in. Here FPS is close to 37. Getting a latency value of around 70 milliseconds. Yeah, gameplay is a bit choppy. We are outside LS VR range. That is 48 to 120. Hitting the GP bottleneck. I'll just disable anti lag too. Keep an eye on the latency. Yeah, it increased to around 95 milliseconds. So, anti lag too helped in reducing the latency by around 25 milliseconds and star feel without frame generation. I'll just enable frame generation now, FSR, on, it's the same spot, now we are getting around 67 FPS and check out the added amount of smoothness, wow, frame generation is working, image quality is looking clean, I am not seeing any graphical artifacts, interface is not flickering, let's talk about the latency, before enabling frame generation, when we had anti-lag 2 enabled, Latency was around 70 milliseconds after enabling frame generation. Latency increased to around 90 milliseconds. This is with anti-lag to enable. Roughly a 20 milliseconds increase in latency. Now I'll disable anti-lag to. Latency increased to around 109 milliseconds. Add another 20 milliseconds. Now I'll disable FSR frame generation and enable AFMF2. Keep reflex enabled. Open internal in. I am expecting AFMF2 to, to increase the latency by around 20 milliseconds as well. Search mode set to high, performance mode set to quality. Just disable VSync. Getting the exact same performance 66 FPS. Yeah, I can observe the added amount of smoothness, but I am also observing some flickering around the crosshair. It's a small pointer. A bit difficult to observe the flickering, but yeah, it's definitely present. See? Visible against a dark background. Games HUD elements are not flickering. You can definitely use AFMF2 in this game. Let's talk about the latency now. It's on the higher side, 100 milliseconds. This is with anti lag 2 enabled. With FSR 3.1, we were getting around 90 milliseconds of latency. I'll disable anti lag 2. Oh my god. Latency shot up to around 130 milliseconds. So AFMF2 increased latency by around 30 milliseconds in this game. FSR 3.1 increased latency by around 
20 milliseconds this is with anti lag to enable next we have hogwarts legacy for this game i have set the uma buffer size to auto so 720p resolution first i'll run the game without frame generation 720p resolution dlss subscaler enable which is basically xcss using its quality preset frame generation of reflex enable motion blur disable motion of settings are set to low shadow quality and texture quality set to medium ray tracing off i just enable and delay to latency monitor all shift and l keys there you go internal and settings for the game free sync and vsync enable that's it standing at the entrance of hogsmeade here fps is close to 60 latency value 56 to 60 milliseconds we are not hitting the gpu bottleneck so the game's performance is limited by the single core cpu performance I'll just disable anti lag too. No change in latency. I'm holding the right control key. I think this is due to the fact that the game is not hitting the GB waterline. I'll just enable frame generation. On. Resume the game. FPS increased to around 110. Yeah, I can observe the added amount of smoothness. Frame generation is definitely working game's interface is not flickering no significant graphical artifacts you can definitely use fsr frame generation in this game latency value is around 55 milliseconds disable anti-lag 2 yeah latency increased to around 70 milliseconds so fsr frame generation increased the latency by around 15 milliseconds in this game we were getting around 55 milliseconds of latency without FSR frame generation and anti lag 2. Frame generation of reflex enable, open adrenaline, vsync disable, AF have to enable, search mode set to high, performance mode set to quality. Back to the game 100 to 110 FPS, roughly the same performance using AF MF2 and FSR 3.1 frame generation. Observing some fuzzy textures around our character model. Nothing significant. Crosshair is not flickering. Games hard elements are not flickering as well. Latency value around 55 milliseconds. I'll just disable anti lag too. Nothing happened. It may not be working properly. I'm not sure. So you can use anti-lag version 2 to reduce the game's latency in GPU demanding scenarios. Anti-lag 2 works even without frame generation. In Cyberpunk 2077, anti-lag 2 decreased the latency by around 10 milliseconds without frame generation. This decrease in latency varies from game to game. On an average, FSR 3.1 frame generation increased the latency by around 10 to 20 milliseconds. Got roughly the same latency using AFMF2 in most of the games. AFMF2's latency in Starfield was 10 milliseconds higher than that of FSR 3.1. FSR 3.1 and AFMF2's frame generation performance was identical, but FSR 3.1 produced less graphical artifacts. In most of the games, I observed the crosshair flickering when using AFMF2. Some ghosting was also produced around the character model when using AFMF2. So use FSR 3, 3.1 wherever possible. That's it for the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.